हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू आवर चैनल डेली डॉक्टर दिस इज अ सेकंड पार्ट ऑफ अवर पोलियो वायरस ओके इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट द क्लिनिकल मैनिफेस्टेशन एंड द लैब डायग्नोसिस इन द आवर फर्स्ट वीडियो वी हैव टॉक्ड अबाउट द मार्फोलॉजी एंड द पैथोजेनेसिस ऑफ द पोलियो पैरालिटिक पोलियो माइलिटिस ओके सो वॉट आर द क्लिनिकल साइंस विच यू कैन सी इन इन अ पेशेंट सफरिंग फ्रॉम पोलियो ओके it actually comes in three phases first phase is called as inapparent infection okay second phase is the abortive infection or minor illness and the third phase is non paralytic poliomyelitis and the fourth one will be the paralytic poliomyelitis poliomyelitis okay so what happens in inapparent infection suppose a child has a uh, Uh, got the infection through fecal oral route or the through the respiratory droplet following the exposure to the polio virus 90 to 95% are what they are asymptomatic those patient will not produce any symptoms of the having the affect uh, having affected with virus okay polio virus in the first phase what happens in the next phase that is abortive infection and abortive infection and minor illness among this 90 to 95% of the cases who have got the infection if their immunity is stronger they will not the, the the virus will not go into the progressive stage okay it will get diminished there only if the child has already taken the vaccine okay in 5 to 10% of cases what happens the child may present with minor illness such as there may be fever there may be malaise there may be sore throat or anorexia that is loss of there may be the loss of appetite headache and myalgia that is muscle ache that may be present in case of a child who is whose immunity is not that much stronger or if the child has not taken any vaccine okay it may present as a minor illness in the starting stage if in that stage if you are not uh, giving him the clinical uh, care okay that that will further progress into non paralytic poliomyelitis that is the third stage here this among this 5 to 10% of the children who have got this abortive infection or the minor illness among them only 1% of the patient present as aseptic meningitis in the earlier video i have told you the family picardo viridae can cause viral myelitis as well as meningitis there were certain viruses who have uh, who are responsible for causing meningitis so what do you mean by this meningitis meningitis is actually the inflammation of the subarachnoid space okay it is the inflammation of the subarachnoid space whereas the viral that is polio myelitis is the inflammation of the spinal cord okay not the subarachnoid space it is the inflammation of the spinal cord which can result in the disruption the connection between the brain and the body parts and body and the brain etc okay so here in 1% of the patient it will present as non non paralytic there will not be paralysis but it will present as a septic meningitis okay now the th- fourth phase is what if the child is not treated okay the child suffering from this infection if it is not treated in the earliest cause it will turn into the disease that is your paralytic poliomyelitis this is the hazard okay it will result into acute placid paralysis of the mostly the lower limbs are most affected the proximal muscles are affected easier than the distal muscles okay how this actually starts the paralysis how it actually starts is first it's uh, the paralysis starts at the hip okay then proceeds towards the ex- extremities that is it will uh, it will affect the lower limbs both of the lower lower limbs and the legs okay and leads to characteristic tripod sign this sign is actually very important in polio in your viva or in exam there may be a there may be a mcq question also there may be a question on the, what is tripod sign okay if the child sits with the flexed hip both arms are extended towards the back for support then that sign is called as tripod sign usually what happens is uh, the if the child is suffering from polio his uh, uh, lower extremities are what they are paralyzed and hip is also paralyzed 
so whenever that child sits no it's it says it sits in a flexed hip and arms extended backwards for the support this is this sign is actually called as tripod sign it is very important and the course of this this is is actually biphasic okay what do you mean by this biphasic course means first you have read uh, i told you first it starts with inapparent infection followed by the minor in minor illness and non paralytic poliomyelitis followed by the paralytic poliomyelitis in the third phase that is in the non paralytic poliomyelitis what happened is a septic meningitis occurs okay it will occur as a septic meningitis in the first phase then the child will show the recovery symptoms okay you actually feel relieved that is uh, because the child is showing the recovery symptoms but it is not exactly the cause it will again revert back okay with the fever and with paralytic features okay the child first starts with aseptic meningitis you are worried then it will show the recovery state state then again uh, the paralysis will occur this is why this polio is called as uh, polio disease actually occurs in as a biphasic course what are the risk factors which are uh, who are more prone to get affected with this polio are actually the pregnant to men are more prone for the infection older children and adult and in whom the tonsillectomy has been done okay and followed by the intramuscular injection why because tonsillectomy it will reduce your immune system pregnant women are more prone that taken the vaccine they are more prone for this infection and older children are also more prone for this infection now now let us look into the lab diagnosis so lab diagnosis is very important you need to mention the diagnosis under the following headings if if you mention it like under the headings like virus isolation culture genome sequencing and serology in a flow chart it will be impressive for the examiner okay so if the patient comes to you uh, first thing you have to do is you have to collect the specimen right so what do you think which is important for the specimen collection it is transmitted through which route Rec uh, fecal oral route so rectal swab is most preferred one and stool samples and also throat swabs are uh, used for collection of this uh, specimen okay next transport how the transport is actually done once you collect the specimen like it may be the throat swab or it may be the rectal swab you need to transport it to the lab right so during that transport it should be frozen okay the specimen should be frozen once you transport it to the lab what should be done for further okay it should be cultured in a cell line so uh, cell line which cell line is preferred one is primary monkey kidney cells primary monkey kidney cells are most preferred one for this virus culture okay so how do you come to know once the virus is grown okay viral growth how you can detect it by the it is by the cytopathogenic effect like the ballooning of the cells whatever the monkey kidney cells in which you are harvesting the virus they will uh, they will bulge and they will appear like ballooning those cytopathogenic effects are seen that means the virus has grown okay viral gene viral antigen are also can be detected through this cell line next part is zero diagnosis zero diagnosis means your antibody detection so what are the antibodies which are present for the polio virus are seen in patient serum okay this is uh, how it is diagnosed is by the neutralization test you have to remember the name of the test neutralization test like uh, and uh, the immunofluorescence test all those tests which are specific for each virology like each virus diagnosis you should remember those tests here it is neutralization test which is done in paid sera so they will compare the raised titer of iga antibodies okay iga antibodies they will find out here once if the patient has taken either the vaccine okay the patient has taken the vaccine the polio vaccine or it he may be having the infection of virus okay so in both the cases you will find the antibodies once the patient takes once the person has already taken the vaccine antibodies will be present in uh, 
uh, he is young and it will persist for life if he is also affected with the virus infection the polio virus infection then in that case also the antibodies will be present so this is not confirmatory okay once we one which is more confirmatory is by the molecular diagnosis the real time multiplex reverse transcriptase pcr okay pcr is very popular from the covid times real time multiplex pcr is used to sequencing the uh this uh, polio vaccine whether it is a uh, polio virus okay whether it is a vaccine derived virus or it is actually a wild strain if you can detect it through what through the molecular diagnosis that is through the pcr okay it's very helpful in sequencing different strains either it is a wild polio virus strain one as i have already mentioned the two strains are already erad eradicated globally and the world polio virus vaccine virus strain because the virus can genetically get converted into the different strains that is vaccine derived polio virus strains okay these all can be detected through the molecular diagnosis what is the main point in this clinical manifestation and your lab diagnosis is you have to remember the uh, terms like acute placid paralysis what do you mean by acute placid paralysis and the report sign which is very important for your practical exams uh, when they give you a case history based on these signs you can identify that is a, it is a case of polio okay and in the lab diagnosis you have to remember this headings why you have to isolate the virus then you have to culture it then you can send it for serology or genome sequencing through pcr one important mcq point is here it is cell line which is the cell line it is primary monkey kidney cells cell line in which the virus is uh, grown okay this is all about today's video i hope you have liked this video please subscribe to our channel if you like this video thank you for watching